I want to talk to you about designing something uh, that you have seen in the store or in, um, let's say, in a catalog or a magazine, uh, or maybe somebody was wearing it, and you uh, loved it so much and you want to make it. And um, I am a big one for cutting out all kinds of pictures and, and uh, things from magazines and uh, catalogs. and. Um, I cut some of these things out just um, for interest. No, I am not going to make this, but um, I was very intrigued with this, this whatever it is. <laughs> um, the colors are fascinating, but um, I would have never thought to use a heavy piece of um, uh, twill type thing for a, a, a skirt that had that much flair. So that was sort of what caught my eye about it. That and the um, mix of colors I thought was kind of interesting. And then I cut this one out. That's just a plain um, outfit, not really very um, fancy, but the inspiration for that is going to come later where I am going to actually do some decorative thread and, in the, and um, do some decorative stitching and, and make those details on the fabric myself instead of getting the fabric that's like that. And then I loved doing the, the uh, colors on that. And this one just fascinated me very much because um, there is something at the bottom of everything, skirts and sleeves, and this has got a very interesting little edge on the bottom of this skirt. Uh, it is, and, and I, I thought, how did she do that? That was just a real interesting um, uh, way, and it looks like it was just stitched up and then clipped. And uh, so I just wanted to share some of those with you so that you could kind of see just some ideas of what I end up doing um, with my, uh, my ideas. I get my inspiration from things I see. And so let's just talk a little bit about something that's really popular out there, and that is uh, flared bottoms or uh, ruffles. Um, this is actually a circular ruffle put on the bottom of a skirt, and um, that is so popular. Well, they've got it on the sleeve also. And, of course, if you had just a, a dress with a princess line dress, of course, this is just like a shirtwaist jacket, too, just a little bit of a shirtwaist jacket, you could take that and just add those ruffles and you'd have the same thing that this designer's made. So let me show you here. This is inserted, if you can see, um, right here on the sides and it's not in the front panel. So all you would do is take your pieces that you have for um, your princess line, that's your center front, and on your sides and on your back, you would just cut them off and make sure you add your seam allowance. Put your ruffle the same amount that you cut that off. Make a circular ruffle. And you know what? You, you can get that information in all kinds of books as far as how to make a circular ruffle. And then if you want to change the sleeve to make it shorter, let's say you have a short sleeve, I mean a long sleeved uh, dress there, then uh, be sure and come in slightly where you do it if it's a three-quarter sleeve because there's too much fullness right here in the sides of the sleeve. And so here, here you can see, oh my goodness, yes, all, all these ruffles. Here's more ruffles on the sleeve and on the bottom. So he, here we're talking about the same thing. Um, if you put a ruffle on something that you've had before, in fact, you could do a contrasting ruffle. You could modern it up and you could change it completely. And here, this I love this idea. This is such a subtle little edge on the bottom of this sleeve. But have you ever made a jacket that was just a little bit too short? Well, that's happened to me, and I thought to myself, I'm going to cut that one out because I think that's a great idea to add a little bit of length to, uh, to a sleeve. Okay, so now let's talk about making something that you see from this pattern. Um, as you can see, this jacket right here was the inspiration for what I'm wearing. And uh, I loved this jacket. I wasn't interested in making it out of leather, uh, but uh, it probably would have been nice, but I didn't have le leather available, so I made it out of moleskin. But um, notice the lines on this jacket. This is like a princess line. I didn't want the pocket because I didn't really want to put my hands in my pocket there at my waist, so I just eliminated the pockets on mine. And um, 
So the first thing that I thought is what is going to be the type of, of pattern that I'm going to get to use as a base for this. Well, here is a pattern that has a princess line jacket. And here's the collar and there's all the things and it looks like, yeah, that would work perfectly. But what I found out is, is that that seam right there is not going to work because it's got a ruffle on it, and you don't want that ruffle coming over top of the, of the bust area in the wrong place. So that was going to not work at all. So I decided that I was going to go ahead and make this out of one of the jackets that already fit me. I love this jacket. It's a, just a plain, simple Chanel jacket with a fisheye dart. And so um, I just took this jacket, and um, there's my dart, and I moved the dart over. And where I knew, how I knew, is that this dart is actually right below the bust line. And so I just measured over how far I wanted it to be beyond the bust line, uh, uh, bust area, and I just, I just measured that out, and I moved the whole entire dart over just a little bit. And then I also took a little bit less of the width of the dart because I didn't want it to fit quite so tightly um, in the, this midriff area. And so the other very important thing is, is take that grain line and move it over here to this side because you don't want to cut away this pattern here and lose that grain line. So now I have this moved over. Here's my fisheye dart. And if you'll notice, here is the line that you're going to, right there. And then here is the other part. So there's your side. And here it is. Um, and before I cut it apart, I want to go ahead and make some lines across here because this is very important that when I meet these back up they're going to meet so mark those lines before you cut that apart and then I'm going to go ahead and put my seam allowance on it and then once I get my seam allowance on it if I wanted a pocket on it I could do a pocket um, you've got one probably in one of your um, stashes that's just already in something, in some kind of jacket. Just take that and make sure it doesn't go below the hemline. It's very important that it does not go below the hemline. And then um, just stitch it into the seam. And then when you flip this back, you're going to stitch the whole seam all the way around following the pocket and it, the pocket will be right inside of there. Um, one other thing I want to mention is when you're adding a seam allowance, you want to be sure that you fold this over so that that meets uh, and you know that that little point right there is on your jacket. If you look at jackets like this, princess line jackets, you'll see that these, um, these little uh, tabs up there are very important because both of these are above your, seam, your uh, actual seam line. And that gives you a little bit of a turning uh, area that's important. Okay, now let's talk about the detail on the sleeve of this jacket. The sleeve of this jacket has some beautiful lacing. And you can see that I've put that on mine. And it's also uh, on the top of the, the sleeve. Well, that's not something you're going to find in a pattern. Uh, you do not get details like that. That's put in there by the designer. And just to cut that and, and put that in there is not going to work because there's not enough width in the sleeve to really make it lay nice and, and, and uh, drape good. So this is one thing you want to pay attention to is where the, where the, um, the width of that sleeve is going to be added. This is not correct. You will not put it in the side seams because it will end up hanging on the outside of the seam. Uh, and you don't want to split it apart and put it all the way up um, because then you widen out the entire sleeve. If you wanted to make this more, more wider of a sleeve, that's the way you do that. But what you want to do is take your regular sleeve that you have in your pattern and you want to make a mark to the top of where you're going to use this lacing. And um, you're going to stop right there and then you're going to cut across both of those 
both sides and then you're going to split this pattern by slipping it up and there is your fullness in your sleeve that you're going to get and notice on this sample right here that the um, <clears throat> we're going to stitch it right up here and um, go right along the the um, the line and notice that there's a little more fullness at the bottom center and that's very important that's where I wanted all of that and there's a little more dip to it so that when that all comes together that lays really really nice on your hand uh, I guess I've lost my other little piece um, but you also now will make the facing and the facing will lay just exactly to this um, uh, this line right here you will cut it exactly like it except you will come up a little higher and then you will put the right side of the facing to the right side of the fabric stitch around it and then put your lace your uh, eyelets on it grommets and then you're going to um, then you're going to just turn it and you'll have it and lace it up and you'll you'll have a cute jacket right that's so easy you know you can do it right all right, now let me tell you a little bit about a, s a little situation I had where I saw a dress from afar, a skirt from afar, I should say, and um, this skirt was uh, walking up an escalator, and I said, oh, I got to see that skirt a little closer, and of course I lost my husband in the, in the process. I just lost him behind me. I didn't you know completely lose him but um, he wondered where I went and um, so I was up there behind this woman trying to get close up to see the detail of this skirt that she was wearing and um, one thing about it is when I see something that's walking I know I'm not going to see it again and s even if it's in the store I can go back to the store and check it out but uh, you got to home in on the details and so when I saw this lady in this skirt it, the skirt was a black skirt with a uh, kind of a beige uh, bottom that was very sheer I said that is beautiful and I want to do that skirt so I started looking at detail and let me share with you some of the things that you need to do when you're looking at something walking basically is that you need to pay attention to certain things about the lines of what are, what's going on and that is I wanted to make sure, I was sure that the lines were um, sideways uh, on this. I knew, knew that they all went in the same direction. That was very important. And so uh, what I did was uh, I checked that out and then um, I noticed also how the seams were put together because there was just this subtle line going down the down the. Uh, skirt and it was showing and I noticed it was surging but it was not a flat lock it was actually a surge seam and it was laid down onto some um, uh, onto your um, onto your seam so it was actually the right sides of this skirt were put together uh, the wrong sides of this skirt were put together and then the seam was stitched down flat so I quick went to the table and I sketched out what I knew and um, I also realized that this was a trumpet skirt because of the way that it flared at the bottom so I went home and I knew I had a trumpet skirt pattern and so I took this trumpet skirt pattern and all I had to do with this is just go down about where my knee belonged and do a little bit of a of a curve I used my curved ruler and I just did a little bit of a curve and when I cut them apart I put my seam allowance to the top my seam allowance to the bottom and then on the very very bottom of the skirt I mean on the very back of the skirt I just put this together and use the same uh, bottom so every one of these bottoms were the same this actually took very little fabric because everything was going in the same direction it took less fabric than the trumpet skirt uh, pattern actually called for and so that is um, one idea that you might want to think about when you're um, doing something like that you don't have enough fabric is do some inserts on it because that's kind of a neat thing to do well let's talk about a couple of other things that are real popular um, and this is 
One of the things is fringe. You will see fringe on everything. I am talking about the bottom, the sides, the inside. I mean, it's on everything. And so fringe is so easy to do. All you have to do is fray the fabric, just pull the threads until it's the width you want. Leave a little bit of base so that you can stitch it on into the fabric. And then when you come over here and put it into the uh, body of the, of the jacket or the whatever you're doing, um, you just stitch it on just like it was piping. And so it is just actually sandwiched in between your body of your jacket and your, um, and your um, uh, facing. And here is, a, is one made um, just, just easy as pie, but look at what it does to make that modern look to your jacket. Um, just a little bit of, just a little bit of fringe, a little bit of, of um, texture there makes it great. And um, that's the other thing that I look at when I'm looking at patterns. When I'm looking at pictures, I always try to, to home in on the detail. And sometimes I don't get something because I like exactly what the, the design is, but I actually get it because of something like this where there's a detail inside there that is actually pin tucked. All of this is the same fabric. And then inside that jacket, that blouse was pin tucked in just uh, two different directions. And the detailing on that is so fascinating to me and here is just shearing on the back of this uh, this jacket and what's really neat about this is it doesn't have to be denim this could be another kind of a fabric you know if you do some shearing on this on on uh, fabric it actually makes a different kind of a texture so it looks like you have two kinds of textures and um, you it, it's a lot of fun to to, to kind of change the texture of things and make them a, a more interesting interesting. And then here is one that I um, pulled out and this was just because I have some fabric that looks almost like this and I decided that is a good looking jacket to make for um, that fabric. And so I cut it out and I'll keep it with the fabric so that I can remember the style that I enjoyed looking at for that. And uh, actually that's very similar to the jacket that I have on. Um, so uh, here is a couple other ideas that I had um, from these. And here is what, what you're looking at is inspiration. This is things that I would watch for and look at the balance on that jacket. That is such an interesting way that they've put some embroidery and um, you just want to be sure that you do it right and so having something like that as a guide is helpful. Or maybe colors. That's very interesting, the colors of that jacket. And then here's some great ideas for just putting some detail on. Um, just a great idea, just that little piping down the side of that raglan sleeve is, is a neat idea to use use for um, just some something that you might think you could do uh, that would spruce up, make your outfit look like a designer.